early spring in Central Europe. At the beginning of March, the nights are still frosty and the trees bare. But as the sun gradually gets stronger, nature will soon be awakened to new life. The last of the winter chill is still in the air. But the animal and plant worlds are already poised in the wings. The first flocks of returning birds signal a new start. The hare's anticipation is almost tangible. After the long, dark winter season with scanty fare and little physical activity, animals are now preparing for a very different world. A world full of light, warmth and movement. The months ahead will be tough. Stocking up energy, growing and propagating the species, these are the great challenges in the spring. Luckily, food will soon be available in abundance. This attracts migrating birds back from their winter quarters. Storks and starlings are the first to return to Central Europe from their stay in the south. Their wintering grounds are hotter and drier, and there's far more competition for food resources. Here, they're lured by plentiful food and nesting sites, making the long journey worth their while. They generally cover these long stretches in large flocks, for safety. During the breeding season, they spread out across the country, each founding its own family. Hares start early. By the beginning of March, their courtship battles are already well underway. Hares are usually most active at dusk and at night. Only during the mating season can they often be seen during the day. As so often in spring, when a violent sparring match breaks out, it's usually about winning the favor of a female. The winner has the best chance of becoming a father. In the meadows, fields and forests, the number one priority now is procreation. The robin is also loud in its search for a partner. The light and warmth of the spring sunshine gets the hazelnut sap rising. The male blossoms show off their tremendous quantities of pollen, while the female blossoms develop quite inconspicuously. They don't have to rely on insects for pollination. It's the wind that accomplishes this task. Just a gentle breeze is enough to release clouds of pollen and carry it to the female blossoms. And the development of the next hazelnut harvest is well on the way. Among the first flowering plants to appear in March are the pasque flower and the crocus. 
Their roots and bulbs have stored up energy the previous year. Now they're among the front runners. Almost overnight, huge carpets of them appear. As soon as it's warm enough, honeybees emerge. Coordination is still a bit tricky. But they soon get the hang of it. With its long proboscis, the bee fly can easily reach the nectar in even the deepest calyx. Like the cowslip. Sunlight and warmth now coax forth flowers everywhere. The tree's bare branches still let the sun's rays reach the forest floor almost unhindered. Countless wood anemones thrive there in the spring sunshine. Their early blooms are very important for bees. because this is when they most need protein-rich pollen to feed their new brood. To ensure the survival of their bee colony, they toil away tirelessly, from dawn till dusk. In spring, streams and rivers are still icy cold. Wherever the water is clean and clear is home to the dipper. Its well-oiled plumage protects it against the cold and wet. This is very helpful for underwater foraging. Like the dipper, trout are only happy in clean, unpolluted streams. In quieter areas, the occasional muskrat can be sighted. Originally from America, it only settled in Germany during the last century. It's clearly identifiable by its hairless, laterally flattened tail. Many birds, such as the wren and the siskin, come to the riverbank to drink. Streams are the lifelines of the forest, and this is where the dippers set up their nursery. The parent birds are collecting cushioning material for their nest. Their mating season was back in winter. Now they're starting their first brood. It takes the busy couple around two weeks to construct their nest. And to finish it off, a nice leaf. Thoroughly cleaned, it serves as a soft cushion for the eggs. With the nest finished, the male bird's job is now done. The task of hatching the eggs falls to the female dipper. A squirrel has set up home among the still bare branches of a tree. They build their nests high up in the trees, either from twigs and moss, or inside a hollow in a tree trunk. The mating season for squirrels begins in January. By March at the latest, most females are pregnant and preparing for the imminent birth of their young. They need plenty of rest. Even though their big bellies make it difficult to find a comfortable position. Mm -hmm. 
the forest isn't looking particularly spring-like yet. But in the animal world, plenty has been happening. Among the hares, many females are also carrying the next generation. Most trees will remain bare of leaves until at least late March. And this is what causes a growth spurt on the ground below. Beech seedlings grow fast to ensure their place in the sun. Hundreds of little saplings strive upwards before the leaves of their parent tree cast them into the shade. Higher up in the trees, numerous birds are still on the lookout for a partner. The robin is one of the loudest. His repertoire consists of over 250 songs. Birds sing to impress their potential partners. Here, it's not about size and strength, but vocal supremacy. At the end of March, willows sprout their catkins. The female flower heads are on one twig, and the males bearing their load of pollen on another. Unlike the hazelnut, the willow needs creatures to help the pollination process. A job for insects. In return, they get food. The small tortoise shell has spent winter as a butterfly and now it's feeding on nectar to gain strength. Bumblebees and honeybees collect protein-rich pollen too. At the same time, the insects fertilize the female blossoms. More and more songbirds are now building their nests. The first step is always the hardest, as the hawfinch also discovers. The main thing is that she likes it. Among nest builders, the long-tailed tit is the real craftsman. And a master of camouflage, in the tangle of branches, the nest is almost invisible. Spider webs, lichens and mosses are the best formula for a soft padded nursery. The starlings have also been gripped by the construction bug. This male enthusiastically gathers nest material. He knows that if you offer a fancy home, you'll find favor with the ladies. This tit looks as if he would quite like to move into a pre-constructed nest. But the house owner doesn't see things the same way. If anyone, it has to be a female starling which he loudly advertises. The squirrel has also done a good job of padding its hollow high up in the tree and returns to it more and more frequently. There's a big event in the offing. contractions begin.
the birth is in full progress. No sooner has the first baby been licked clean than the next one is on its way. Baby squirrels arrive tail first into the world. It takes around two hours to give birth to four babies. Thumb-sized, naked, blind and deaf. Utterly vulnerable. They instinctively root for their mother's teats. Suckling milk will be their main activity for the next six weeks. The ornamental cherry is one of the first trees to blossom. Weeks before the fruit-bearing trees begin to blossom and leaves sprout on the trees in the forest, the ornamental cherry lives up to its name within just a few days. Its fragile blossoms are an exuberant burst of color, signaling early spring.